Hello there, Ben Bowers, the Spirit Specialist, and I am here today to talk to you about a relatively new Canadian whiskey to the UK shores. This is Bear Face. I don't know if that's what bears do. Um, but this is a uh, called Triple Oak Elementally Aged. And believe it or not, Elementally Aged is actually trademarked to Bear Face. So Canadian whiskey gets a really pretty piss poor reputation, to be honest. A lot of people dismiss Canadian whiskey, um, mainly because of things like Seagram's, Crown Royal, uh, Canadian Club, um, easy drinking, really good for cocktails, but it, you know, American whiskey is absolutely massive and Canadian whiskey really does kind of just, it's, it's kind of like the, the younger cousin that nobody really talks about and doesn't really like. But I have come across some absolute belting Canadians and this, spoiler alert, is up there with one of them. But before I tell you what this tastes like, let me give you some background information about the brand, the person behind making it, the kind of convoluted way that this is put together, um, and exactly what elementally aged TM means. Launched in November 2018, but only hitting the UK shores in mid-2023, Bareface Elementally Aged Triple Oak is a Canadian whiskey that aims to break out of an often poorly regarded category. The Canadian whisky industry is one of the least regulated, which doesn't help matters in terms of that reputation, but it does allow producers to really play around with production methods. In the case of Bareface, a mash bill of 99.5% corn and 0.5% barley is aged for seven years in American oak ex-bourbon casks at an undeclared distillery in the province of Ontario, which based on locations of existing distilleries in Canada is more likely based in Toronto, before being given to Andreas Faustinelli, master blender for the Bareface brand. He uses his base whiskey as a blank canvas to work with, transferring it into French oak barrels that previously held Cabernet Sauvignon, Merlot and Cabernet Franc wines at the Mission Hill Winery based in British Columbia. But instead of bringing the wine cast to him, the whiskey itself travels nearly 4,000 kilometres to Mission Hill to be transferred into those barrels and rest in the winery cellars. For a final flourish, the spirit then undergoes what has been trademarked as elemental ageing. Casks made from Hungarian oak, known to provide a spicy influence to spirits, are filled with the whiskey and spend time in shipping containers in the middle of British Columbia forests. The extreme temperature fluctuations of the region, with bitterly cold nights and conversely hot days, combined with the metal containers, create increased agitation and interaction between whiskey and wood. This triple oak maturation process aims to create three distinct flavours within the whisky. Soft vanilla from the ex-bourbon American oak, red berry notes from the French oak wine barrels, and a spicy finish from the virgin Hungarian oak. To top it all off, the whisky is then presented in an incredibly distinctive bottle that looks like it's been slashed by a big old grumpy bear. Bare-faced, elementally aged triple oak Canadian whisky is bottled at an ABV of 42.5%. Okay, so that's the convoluted way in which bare face is produced. Um, I have a sample available, um, so there is a little bit left for people in the shop if you do want to try it. Um, and kind of what we're looking at here is this weird combination of the three different cast types, this kind of, um, I suppose it's a way of doing rapid aging by having essentially these massive temperature fluctuations in the in the forests of British Columbia where we've got really really cold at night but then really really warm during the day and through the seasons as well um, we've got seven year old um, seven and a bit I suppose although it doesn't actually give an age statement on here um, with it being Canadian you also have the French equivalent as well so this is Canadian whiskey Canadian um, uh, triple oak triple chan or whatever it is that's triple dog isn't it um, but uh, element elementally aged TM for a bolder smoother flavor and it's using that word that I don't like smooth what does that even mean? I love the bottle though. That was the first thing that attracted me. That kind of like bare claw scratches on it that's going into the label. Really eye catching, really stands out. So let's go straight into it. So on the nose, there is a really nice fruity spiciness on this. There's elements of the red wine cast coming through. There's a little touch of tannin. There's a lot of red berry going on. There's kind of like dark cherry as well as, as well as, well as like lighter red fruits like raspberries and strawberries in there. 
but you do get a dark cherry, but you also get this lovely soft spice, that hint of tannin from a red wine, but it turns into, it's not drying, it's more like spiciness in there. Hints of chili flakes. I mean, even if, even if I didn't know this was Canadian, I wouldn't even have said like, oh, this is probably an American whiskey. It's not, there's not that kind of like vanilla sweeter element that you would, you would associate with American whiskeys. This is a bit more red fruit. There's elements a little bit of something like the, um, ba, 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 the harvest, uh, Lockley that was in the wine cast, that kind of STR note that's coming through. Really, really interesting nose. Not massive, and it doesn't linger, but there is a lot going on here, and it's very much kind of like red fruit spices. You know, the wine influence is there, that spiciness is there. There's less of the sweetness, I would have said, from the bourbon cask, but you can absolutely get the latter two casks. You get that red wine cask element, and you get that spicy Hungarian oak. Right, let's see if that continues on the palate. And it absolutely does. And, and you actually get a progression of the three casts that it's been matured in, in the order of which they've gone through that process. So it starts off really quite sweet. You know, we're looking at 99.5% corn or 99.95 or whatever it was, a lot of corn. So it starts off very, very sweet, a real kind of, um, not quite barley sugar, but there's a lovely kind of caramel toffee butterscotch sweetness coming through initially at the start as it goes into your mouth. Then you get this kind of dry red berry, slight tannin that's on the nose, comes from the mid palate. You do get that clear wine influence starts to come through. The danger with that is it becomes a little bit too drying, but then what happens is you get the influence from the Hungarian oak coming through on the finish where it goes nice and spicy kind of like cracked black pepper, chili flakes, not too dry, but it lengthens out that finish. It's not a sweet finish, but it is lengthy because it's you've got this kind of slight tingle of like almost like chili heat coming through. Very, very subtle, not overpowering at all, but it absolutely draws that finish out. And it, and it really does progress from sweet to wine to spice and, and it's like a really good red wine that's got a good long finish on it, that's got a lovely kind of like spiciness. I can imagine eating this with a lovely steak and chips with a lot of sea salt on and a really nice salad that's got like a balsamic vinegar dressing on where you have a lot of flavors going on here. You've got like the, the meatiness of the steak, which would go with a red wine. You've got that kind of like maybe sprinkled chili flakes as it's been cooked over the top of it. You've got a bit of sweetness. You've got that kind of balsamic vinegar coming through and all of that would complement this whiskey and this whiskey would complement that food really, really well. There is a lot going on on this. And for a Canadian whiskey, which has, as, again, as a category, has such a poor representation, rep reputation with kind of like hardcore whiskey drinkers, this has so much going on with it that it instantly puts it in my top 10, even top five Canadian whiskies that I've had. And I've had a, quite a few Canadian whiskies and there's some absolute belters out there. 40 Creek, uh, Pipe Creek Rum Cask, uh, Lot 40 Rye, there's a few others out there. And this is in there in terms of that complexity, but it's still delicate, it's still approachable, it's still soft and easy drinking. There is just a lot going on with it. I've been talking about chili flakes and uh, chili flakes and tannin and red wines and everything like that. And it might sound like it's big and beefy and bold and quite drying. It's absolutely not because that big corn element tempers everything, softens everything down, adds this layer of sweetness that just kind of stops it being too dry, too spicy, too much like a kind of really intense rye whiskey that you get that's like really dry and, and kind of like it feels like it's sucking all the liquid out of your mouth. Um, this is absolutely fantastic. I'm really intrigued to try this in an old fashioned um, because I think there is a lot going through on this. And to be honest, maybe not even an old fashioned, a Manhattan with that red wine influence that's in there and that spiciness. If I can pick a good sweet vermouth to go with this, it needs to be a vermouth that's got a little bit more to it. And I've got a couple of ideas of what it might work with. This is a 
I think this could be a brilliant Manhattan whiskey. I really do. Old fashioned, maybe, kind of depending on what else you put with it. But I'm going to have to try this in a Manhattan because I think this would work really well. But obviously, Manhattan's American, so maybe we have to change the name to a, a, a Ontario. That would make sense. So an Ontario is Bareface and is there Canadian vermouth? No. Okay, we'll find another one. But yeah, rather than Manhattan, we'll call it an Ontario. Um, and it's basically a Manhattan, but with Canadian whiskey. I love this. I love everything this is doing. There's so much going on in that in that palette. It's very much a whiskey for people that like red wine. If you don't like red wine, you might struggle a little bit with this, but I think the sweetness from the corn and that initial bourbon maturation offsets enough of that kind of tannin influence that it, it, it will still, I think it will, won't be as much of a challenge if you're not a red wine drinker. And I love that spicy finish as well. I think it's absolutely fantastic. It looks cool as hell. I love this. I've got one of these in the window to incentivize people to come in. The other great thing about this, because when I first got told about this by my uh, supplier, um, and, and he said, oh, we've got this new Canadian whiskey. And I looked at the bottle and I was like, oh, that looks really cool. Yes, I'd like it in, please. How much is it? I was expecting it to be 40, 45 quid, maybe even pushing 50. Now, I know Canadian whiskey doesn't really have that kind of uh, like allure of demanding high prices, but just the way the bottle looked and it's new and American whiskey is really popular and the prices are going up and everything like that. I was expecting 45 quid would be good. 34.99 this is working out as. Um, and I think that is an absolute bloody bargain. I really do think for 35 quid, for a really eye-catching bottle and a whiskey that's got that much complexity, that much versatility that it will drink really, really well, but it will also go in a Manhattan. I think it will work in an old fashioned, but something like a Manhattan, a whiskey forward cocktail, that is going to be an absolute winner. I think it's brilliant. You know, the, the elementally aged and all this lot, when you read up about it, it's kind of like, oh, this sounds a bit like marketing nonsense, but actually, what they've done with it, the end result works and it works really, really well. Yes, it's a convoluted, convoluted process. It does seem a little bit almost unnecessary, but when the end result is as good as that, it's worth it. It's absolutely worth it. And I'd be really interested to see what else they come up with. Now, this bottled at 42.5%. I'd love to see what this is like at 50. I do wonder whether it would be maybe a bit overbearing, maybe a bit too dry, that sort of thing. Maybe they've needed to knock the um, ABV down to kind of allow more of that sweetness to come through, the bourbon influence. But I'd love, I'd just love to try a cast strength version of this as well. Or maybe one when they've put it in slightly different casks. You know, they've, they've got like a rum cast version or something like that. Anything else, but this is brilliant stuff. I highly recommend it. I think it's an absolute bloody bargain for the price. It is superb. So if you do want to get a bottle, and I do stress that this is a good idea for you to get one. Uh, that was a sentence that started to go in one direction and I had to really wangle it back to what I was trying to say. Um, you can buy it from the website, www.spiritspecialist.com, $34.99. Um, and I have UK delivery available. So if you live in the UK, I can ship it to you at very little cost or spend over 150 quid and then it's free. Um, but yeah, brilliant stuff. Good looking bottle. Good looking whiskey, very good tasting whiskey. I am going to take the rest of this and save it for customers, see if I can get a little bit more um, because I also want to try and make a Manhattan with it because I think it's going to be a very, very tasty Manhattan. No, Ontario, we're going to call it. A very tasty Ontario. That is me done. I shall see you at the next video. Cheers.